Have you ever wondered how ChatGPT can understand your document and give you a structured answer based on your question? Now, the underlying technology is called RAG, which stands for Retrieval Augmented Generation. And in fact, there were already products out there that were built using the same concept. One example is ChatPDF. It is very similar to what you have seen in ChatGPT, but it is with more advanced features like document management, a side-by-side -side document viewer, citations, and more. And today, I'm going to show you how you can build a similar application with absolutely no code. We are able to accomplish this with a combination of three different tools. The first one is Level.dev, which creates a user interface like project dashboards, document upload, as well as a conversational chat user interface. The second one is Superbase, which manages user authentication, document storage, and the chat memory. And last but not least, we have NAN, which connects the front end and back end together with webhooks. And more importantly, it has the Rack agent under the hood, which does all the heavy lifting such as factorizing document and generating smart answers based on the user query. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the core concepts of Rack so you understand how it works and then also walk with you step by step on how to set this up on your own machine. Now, if you find this video useful, make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss any future AI automation content. And just a quick reminder that this template is completely for free and you can grab it from my free community, which is linked in the video description below. And if you are serious about building with AI, we just launched AI Builders Lab Pro, which gives you a structured learning path on mastering NAN, tons of curated AI resources and templates, and more importantly, a weekly task support call directly with me so that you can move faster and get unstuck. All right, so enough about myself. Let's dive into how Rack actually works. So Retrieval Augmented Generation, as the name implies, it has three parts, the Retrieval, Augmentation, and Generation. We'll first talk about document upload and retrieval. So for a document, it could be a PDF, it could be a text file, just anything with text information. And then because LLMs usually can't handle a large document as a context all at once, so we need to split them into chunks. Now in this example, I've split the document into three chunks, and each chunk is just basically part of the document. And then all the chunks will be passed into an embedding model. It could be OpenAI embeddings, or it could be Anthropic embeddings. So each kind of model companies will have its own way of doing embeddings. And then with doing that, we turn the chunks into something that we call vectors. And vectors are mathematical representation of its meaning. So if two vectors have similar meanings, if they will be placed closer together in a vector space. Now, if they have very different meaning, they will be further away from each other in the vector space. When a document is factorized, we can now do a very similar process for the retrieval part. So whenever a user has a question in text, so in this case, it's what are the key benefits of using solar energy, we'll pass this text query to the same embedding model that we use for vectorizing the document, which then turns into a vector in the vector space. And then essentially the retrieval part is to find the K nearest neighbors for that vector. So in this case, the vector is placed here, and then we just fetch the three nearest chunks or the vectors that is closer to what the user is asked about. So key benefits about solar energies. Now, after we have retrieved all the vectors, we apply a technique that is called re-ranking, which basically just have all the retrieved vectors from the vector database as an input, and then we'll re-rank each of them using a specific algorithm, such as comparing similarity score, and just pick the top vectors out of it. And then from those top vectors, we'll turn them back into chunks and pass it back to the LM or the AI agent in this case to generate the smart answer for the user. Now, essentially, you can think about the former part is the augmentation part, and then back to the AI agent, it's for the generation part. So that's how retrieval augmented generation works. All right, so now we have all the concepts about Rack. Let's go back to any end and do a live build together so you know how each node is being set up. And during the process, I'll also talk about how you can set up your super base and also eventually set up webhooks to connect to your lovable front end. So what I'm going to do is to delete everything from here and start from scratch. Let's first start with the document upload section. So the first thing I'll be doing is to set up a NAN form trigger so that I can test uploading a document before using Lovable. So we'll set up the form title to be upload and also add a form element, which is called document. And also set the element type to be file. So the trigger is set up. The next thing is to set up the vector store node. So you can search it here and eventually you will pick the super base vector store and choose these add document to vector store. Now we'll just configure the credentials and the table name and everything later on. But before that, I'll actually need to pick an embedding model so we can choose how 
you know, the document is being embedded. So what we can do is to go ahead and just type OpenAI here, and then we'll use the OpenAI's text embedding free small model as the default one. And to create your OpenAI credentials, you can just click the drop down menu here and then click on create new credentials and then go to platform.openai.com, load in some credits. Eventually you will land into this API keys page, which you can create a new API key and give it a name and select a project. And you can now obtain your secret key. Now, just a quick reminder that don't share this secret key to anyone else. And for my case, I'll just delete it after this tutorial. Now, once you have set up the API key, you can just paste it in here. And then when everything is fine, it will set connection tested successfully. So now you have the embedding model set up here. So after you have set up the embedding model, the next step is to set up the data loader so that you can actually split the document into chunks and later on vectorize them in Superbase. So the next step is to click on this document tab and then click on default data loader. And then we'll have the type of data to be binary because we'll be uploading to file. For text splitting, we'll choose custom so that we can add a custom text splitter. And then for this, we're gonna choose recursive character text splitter. And we'll just leave the default values here. Once you have set up the default data loader, we can now head back to this Superbase vector store node and actually set up a new credentials. You'll need two things. One is the host, and the second one is service row secret, which I'm going to talk about how you can actually obtain those. So you can go to superbase.com slash dashboard and sign up for an account. Once you have signed up the account, you will be in this organization page, which you can create a new organization and eventually go to the dashboard of that organization. After you have set up the organization, you can now click on the new project in your dashboard and you'll be prompt to enter a few things. So the project name, database, passport, and pick the region. So the project name for my case is gonna be chat PDF clone two, but you also feel free to use your own name and just use a strong password for your database and also remember it because we'll use it later in the credentials. Now for region, I'm just gonna to stick to the default one and eventually I'll click on create new projects and the new project will be just spinning up in a couple of minutes. Okay, so once you have set up the project, now the next step is to go to project settings and click on this data API. So you have the project URL here. So we're gonna go ahead and copy this. And then this is essentially the host of your Superbase account. So paste it in here. And then the next step is to go to API keys, which you have this service row secret here, which you can review it and copy it and eventually also paste it in, in this row. So you save it. And eventually if everything's right, it will also says connection tested successfully. All right, so the Superbase credentials are set up, but you'll notice there is a second error here, which is on the table name. And if you click on the drop down, it says no results here. It is because we haven't got our vector database set up yet. So we will need to create the database together now. So what you can do is to head back to the SQL community tutorial. And I have the SQL query here for actually initializing the vector store. So essentially you can just copy and paste this entire thing. So control C. And then what you can do is to head back to Superbase and click on the SQL editor here and just click on new SQL snippet and then just run this entire thing. And now it takes a couple of seconds and it will say success no rules return. It's essentially just creating the vector database inside Superbase. And if you go back to the database tab here, you can see now a new table has been generated called vector documents, which has the ID, the content, metadata and embedding, which will be used to fill up later when we upload new documents. So now going back to any end, you can actually refresh this drop down menu. And now the table name that is called vector document should appear here. And the final step here is to add a new option here, which then gives us a query that is called match documents. It is essentially used to query the vector database and find the matching chunks. So now we have everything set up. Let's just go ahead and test this document upload. So what I'm going to do here is to click on execute workflow so that an NAM form is triggered for us to upload documents. And then we're just going to pick a file with a PDF. So in my case, I'm going to upload a Bitcoin white paper document. And eventually you can see that all the nodes are executed and then the documents are being chunked and also vectorized in the database. So if you go back to the vector database store, you can see now once it's refreshed and all the contents are here so that you can see that the tags are being chunked into different roles with the metadata and more importantly, the actual embeddings that we talked about early in this tutorial. Now moving on to the second part, which is the document chat query part. So the first thing we can do here is to set another trigger that is called chat trigger. Now the reason I use this is because I want to test it out within NAN first before we connect them to the lovable front end. And then once we have the chat trigger set up, we can now connect them to an AI agent node. So pick on AI agent here and then just rename this to PDF chat agent, for example. And now we have a few things to configure, which is the chat model, the memory and the tool. 
So the first thing we're going to do is to select the agent's brain. And in our case, since we already have the OpenAI's API key, we're going to stick with the OpenAI chat model and just leave the default model here and using the same credentials you have done for the embeddings. So we'll save it. And now we have the chat model set up. Now, in order to have a seamless conversation experience with the AI agent, the agent needs to have access to memory, which it remembers what the user has chatted with it in the past and not forget about things. So the next step is to set up a memory node. And to do it one step further, we are not going to use the simple memory node, but use a persistent memory node in Postgres SQL database. So we do Postgres chat memory. And luckily, the Postgres is also hosted within Superbase so that we can actually set our credentials pretty easily. Now, to do that, what we can do is to click on this drop-down menu and create a new credentials. But this time, we have a more fields to fill in, but it's very easy, trust me. So we're just going to go back to the database in Superbase and click on this connect button here. Now, we're going to click on the Postgres SQL tab here and go to the transaction pooler section and view the parameters. So what we can do is copy each parameter and just paste it in the Postgres credential. So the host is going to be this, and we'll replace localhost with that. And also the user is going to be this, and we'll replace this. And the password is just the password that you have set early when you initialize your project. And the last thing we're going to do is to also use this port number instead of the default port. So we're going to paste it in here and save it. And once everything is fine, it also says connection tested successfully. And then the last thing we need to do is to enlarge the context window length so that it has up to 20, so that the agent just remember more things the user has talked in the past. And we'll also change this previous node and table name when we have the lovable front end setup. But for now, when testing things out, we're just going to leave the default table name set up by NAN. So let's go back to the canvas. And the last thing we need to do here is to give access to the AI agent, our Superbase vector store, so that it can actually retrieve the chunks, re-rank them, and also generate an answer from there. So what we can do is to click on this tool button here, and then now search for Superbase. We'll have Superbase vector store here. And now you can use the same credentials as we just set up, and also leave this operation mode as retrieve documents. So in the description, we're just going to paste in this, use this to get information about users' documents in the project. So they just have a better chance of triggering this tool when the AI agent kind of reasons through that. So for table name, we're going to choose the vector documents table that we have just set up and set the limit to be 20 so that we can use these 20 trunks to re-rank them later on. So now we also check this re-rank results here so that it triggers the re-ranker and allows us to connect with the re-ranker. So now we'll pick this re-ranker to be cohere. And in order to use the cohere re-ranker, you also need to set up an API key. But luckily this time it's very straightforward. So all you need to do is to sign into cohere and eventually you land to the dashboard, which you can click on this API keys tab and just copy this trial keys here. So copy and paste in this field. And now everything should be just setting up. So we'll just use the default chosen model, which is rerank 3.5 to be the re-ranker. And then we just need to also set up the open AI embedding model so that it uses the same embedding model as we vectorize the document. So just leave everything here and just tidy up the document. So now we have everything set up. We can actually click on this open chat node here and then just paste in a question that we want to ask the documents about. So when I paste in this question, the agent is going to reason through that, save the conversation in the Postgres chat memory, as well as retrieving documents from the vector database store, we rank the chunks, and then also using the same embedding models that we use for the default data loader. And eventually, it will just generate an augmented answer. So Bitcoin white paper does not use UTXO, but then et cetera. And then it just kind of explain what that concept is about based on the document. And to show you how the re-ranking process actually looks like, you can click on this re-ranker cohere node. And in the JSON file, essentially, it's just kind of giving you the content that has the highest relevant score. So this one has 0 0.6, and the next one has 0 0.5, and then 0 0.4. And essentially, these kind of chunks, it's going to be turned back into text in the vector database store and then passing back to the agent. And now we have completed the entire rec workflow, which you learned about how to split a document into chunks and also putting them into the vector database. And also learned about how to query the database using the same embedding as well as retrieving chunks, we rank them in the vector database store. And the final step here is to replace these triggers with webhook triggers so that we can actually use these workflow in lovable frontend. But this is kind of like an optional step only if you're interested in using a frontend interface, but you're also free to use any other triggers to trigger this rack agent in any end. So what I'm going to do is to set up a webhook trigger. So let's just search for webhook here. And then here we can replace the HTTP method to be post. 
and also choose respond method to using respond to webhook. And it's important we also add a file option here so that the webhook can accept the file upload from the user. So we're going to rename this field to file as well. And now this is our webhook trigger setup for the document upload. And now in the end, we also need to set up a respond trigger node so that it just kind of respond with the respond to the lovable request with the first incoming item. And the next step will be to set up the webhook trigger also for the document chat query part. So very similarly, we're going to use the same trigger and select the H3 method to be post and choose the respond method to using respond to webhook. This time we don't need to pass any additional properties. So we just need to connect these together like so. And also, eventually, you'll use respond to webhook to respond the first incoming item back to Lovable. So this is like a complete setup that you can interact with Lovable. So going back to Lovable, I'm going to show you my prompt history so that you can know how I eventually get this front end setup. And don't worry about it, you can also get this prompt inside my school community. And I'll also show you how I actually prompt Lovable so that I don't have to go into the code editor itself and add in all the webhooks request manually. So what I'm going to do here is to just going through the chat history. You can see that when I give them the first prompt, it will then ask for confirmation about whether I'll use these super based, you know, SQL queries to create the backend database tables. And I just need to manually kind of confirm them. I've revealed the SQL and it looks good. Please run it. And then it will just generate a database store and et cetera. And eventually I also ask Lovable to also give me a sign in method so that I can actually test with a user. And more importantly, the thing is, when I get the webhook URL ready, so going back to the NAN workflow here, so this is essentially the webhook request that you need to copy. So in the production use case, when you're ready to deploy, remember to copy this production URL like so, and also turn this workflow to be active so that Lovable can actually access the production webhook. So now here, you actually just need to prompt the lovable agent to and paste this request here and ask it to use the post request. It will just do everything for you. And eventually after a few iterations, the product should be more or less set up and working. And to connect Superbase to your lovable, what you can do here is to tap on the Superbase icon here and eventually just choose the same project you have created for Superbase. So in my case, it's chat PDF clone. And I'll also show you one trick. You can locate your webhook code very easily. So you just need to enable this code editor and then search for nan.cloud if you're using a cloud version, which is part of the webhook URL here. And eventually it's going to return two files that shows you where the webhook is here. So in, in this case, you can see that the fetch request is actually being placed here. And then similarly for the document upload, and then it has the upload webhook here. And you can just kind of, you know, replace the test URL with production URL or just back and forth to test things out. And to see a production webhook request after you have uploaded some documents and also chatted with the agent on Lovable, what you can do is to click on this executions tab, which you can see all the past execution runs, which shows you how the agent is executed and how the NAN node is being run, like so. And that's it for today's tutorial. And if you want to further level up your AI development skills, consider subscribing to AI Builders Lab Pro, which will become the frontier in the AI space together. See you next time.